Herbert Samanya and Charles Chiseka are both running for LC3 councillor for different zones in Makerere 2 in Kampala. The candidates are running joint campaigns and they speak of the challenges they are facing as first timers in a highly monetized process. It's a kind of a society which is very, very hungry. They have been in a lockdown like for months. They have not been working. So they expect a lot from we politicians. Beyond this year, someone without money, someone who is capable, who is not capable now financially, is not going to be able to enter the community to ask for votes. These two are just a few of the many potential leaders who may not win political offices, not because they do not have the ideas, but because they do not have the monies to buy support. A report on pre-campaign spending shows a worrying trend in spending in elections. The study looked at what aspirants in 29 districts spent in 16 months from July 2019 before the official opening of campaigns for the general election in 2021. It shows that the candidates spent 250 billion shillings. But when you extrapolate this over the 146 districts that we do have in Uganda, it could be go over a, a trillion shillings in pre-campaign spending. The reason why the cost of pre-campaign is increasing is majorly because there is, uh, because of poverty, because of COVID-19, but of course because of the apparent lack of fuel services at community level. And therefore, the electorate is more desperate to ask money from the candidates. We really think that government must allocate more resources towards uh, infrastructure, the roads, the hospitals, the schools and generally economic empowerment of the people. What is happening is that people are aspiring for different positions are carrying a very big burden. The report further showed that candidates in Western and Central Uganda spent the money bridging service delivery gaps while in Eastern and Northern parts of the country aspirants spent more helping individuals in communities through handouts. That shows you that voters in Western, in Northern Uganda and Eastern Uganda are more vulnerable to voter bribery than those in Western Uganda, but also the voters in uh, the stake for the uh, political candidate in, East, in, in Western Uganda is so high because the, 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 the level of human development index is so high in that very area. But what is of more concern, according to the experts, is the source of income. Most of the pre-campaign money was got from personal savings, credit, business persons, pension schemes and property sales. Public campaign financing, there should be means, does not appear in the metrics. Ideally, persons, the electorate, must contribute towards the, the support of their own candidate. That is why we have seen politicians, as a result of a lot of spending, they go to parliament or they go to councils to serve their own needs and recoup their money. Findings in relation to political party spending showed NRM as the lead spender in pre-campaign activities as opposition parties continue to struggle. They should also ensure that uh, the clause that speaks to campaigns, where all parties share that money equally, should be enforced. That is one way of leveling the ground. Secondly, uh, the political parties across should look for other ways of mobilizing resources. Uganda is under the multi-party system with no defined difference in ideology among political parties, which breeds duplication of ideas and pledges. These, along with other factors like poverty, tend to make personality and money the difference. Edward Mhumza, NTV.